Welcome to another episode of the Chrissy Mayer Podcast. We are on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, and SoundCloud. And if you're listening to us right now on iTunes, please go and leave a five-star review. It could really say anything. For example, here's a review from Peter Drags Along. <laughs> this review is from the 18th. His review simply says, hey, I love turtles. That's it. That's the whole review. Hey, I love turtles. Uh, he must have seen an episode where I either talked about my tortoise or like showed my tortoise uh, on camera. And then we had a scare with the tortoise. Like we really thought he was dead. Turns out there is such a thing as tortoise coma. <laughs> I think we dehydrated the little guy. I don't know. I'm not a veterinarian. I did want to be one when I was little, but apparently I can't. I can barely keep a tortoise alive. So. Anyway, this episode is brought to you by One Soul. That's right. I'm going to get the website up on here for you guys so you can see. Uh, One Soul is the original interchangeable shoe that began in 2001. It's an interchangeable shoe that you can change hundreds of tops on different bottoms in a snap in seconds. It's known for its comfort and the perfect shoe for traveling because you only need one sole, her, her, get it, and just a handful of tops. There are hundreds of different tops available. But one sole is known for the comfy neoprene top that fits your foot like a glove. You can even customize the tops with any photo or logo that you want. Yes. It has been featured on ABC News as best product made in America and a season finale winner on Shark Tank. It is sold throughout the world and was created by a pharmacist, Dominique McLean Bartit. I just like her name. Um, and it, this is great. This is like, per this is the perfect shoe for, oh, here she was on Shark Tank. I love it. It's basically, and they sent me one because they knew I would be talking about it. It's... <laughs> I actually kind of love the uh, the example top that they sent me here because uh, <laughs> it's like this Trump top, which is like, but I love, I love how it works. Like you just snap it on and off. And this is so good. Like, I don't know if we ever get to traveling again, right? You snap it off. You just take the, literally the one sole and then you just bring a bunch of, little, of these flappy things. And I know, I love that the other thing that they sent me was this like, literally Christmas, like Santa's little helper, like Santa's wife, Mrs. Claus topper. And you just like simply snap it back in. And this is so good for when you travel, you just bring a couple of these flappy things and then one of these soles and then boom, now you're ready to be uh, sexy Mrs. Claus. Anyway, go to onesoul.com, use the promo code CMP. You're gonna get 25% off your whole order. Uh, that's a pretty sweet deal if I don't say so myself. One soul, baby. One soul, one love. Speaking of one love, I'm so excited to have this uh, this guy on the podcast. I've watched his... God, my hair is so wet. I apologize for this. This is a wet hair episode, uh, and I'm wearing a white t-shirt. So that'll... You know, anything for the views, guys. I'm so excited to have this guy on the podcast. He is a comedian, and his album, Not Now More Than Ever, is available now on TLB Records. Hey. Brandon Sagalo. What's up? What's up? Thank you for having me. Oh my God. I'm so I was so into that shoe thing. I forgot that I was even <laughs> on the show. I was so and into like, the one soul. This is something that it's like I, if nothing else, I wish my mom were alive to see this because it's like you can get all your. I mean, I'm not gonna say that this is wow. This is like bedad. I'm not gonna say that this is trashy, but like this is pretty great. Like if you just want to have a fun shoe, yeah. You're like I don't want to spend a hundred dollars. All you need is one soul. I oh. guess that's what it is. <laughs> One soul, three holes. I don't know. Um, uh, <laughs> what's up? I had to count. I had to count really quick. Um, Brendan, this is so great. It's so great to have you on. Uh, oh, um, thank you for uh, having your me. Your hair is a little blonder. Have you been? Yeah, I had a fucking, No, I had a breakdown for a little bit. Oh, no. Was yeah, it a, I, like a COVID-inspired lockdown breakdown? Well, COVID is definitely like the uh, no. I, I I didn't get COVID and had to be locked down, and then I had to <laughs> right. Down. No, that happened very early on in March. But oh no, no. I uh, I just like you know uh, the the releasing of the album, everything. I it was very overstimulated, plus some interpersonal conflicts that I that I I created myself. So oh, okay, uh, you know, and I have a trouble. I have trouble. Um, handling my own conflicts so instead i dye my hair and i paint my nails oh. and i go "Ooh, this is this is control 
So you get I, emo. You're like, I, you, you kind of yes. go back to, is this the, the, the Brendan yes. of high school? Possibly. It is. It's exactly the Brendan of high school. I'm just, <laughs> I just, instead of uh, conquering my problems, like an adult, I just, I, I bleach my hair. Go your lips on his collar. Don't bother Angel. I know exactly what goes on. And I'm just, I would say that nails. dyeing your hair and painting your nails is, is way better than like shooting up a school or um, I don't know joining antifa i think i mean this is how we coped with stuff in our adolescence and it's perfectly fine that you're and this is i've had this conversation with a few other people it's like i think the fact that emo music is kind of gone like metal i mean kids are kids these days are not so much into music Ew. like we were where that was a place that we could kind of Chrissy, let our frustration how, how old are you how old are you uh, 37 37 i okay i guess that you you can't say kids i could say kids these days it's you know Go, who are we talking about? 18, 20? We're not, we're this. I mean, you, you're, you're obviously younger than me. You're probably... I'm 18. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm are 18 you really? Years. No. I just no, want to not. completely avoid. No, come on. I'm 20. Okay, okay. I'm just trying okay. to completely avoid um, saying, uh, you know, just becoming what? these old motherfuckers that say, like, oh, kids these yeah, days yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit. I hate I, know. It. I hate it. I, that's why I listen to like I I, I'm, I listen to new music and I uh I it does you know and I have opinions about the baby and then my friends call me out on it. I go like oh you you know well his you know he gets a lot of shit for his bars but blah 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 and uh, his my bars, friends are like oh yeah. sorry I didn't know are you gonna go hang out with your teenage friends Agalo? <laughs> You're like yes I met them on Snapchat. <laughs> yeah I met, I them, met on them on TikTok. TikTok. Yeah yeah Rizzle. <laughs> I have TikTok friends, but yeah, I don't know. Anyway, it's um, I I'm surmising this was a romantic relationship based oh, on your hair everything. color, yeah. everything. Is that what it is? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, you like somebody, and then uh, ugh. you know, everything kind of just falls apart, doesn't it? Yeah, and I've had that happen to me. Like, to do. I overthink every fucking second of the day, and um, that's just what I did in this situation. But I think I'm out of it, although. Yeah. That's the thing about the hair. It's like you you get out of it, but the hair is still. It's a reminder. It's like when Brittany shaved her head, I'm sure she was feeling better, but she was like, oh, wow, this <laughs> totally, is. I'm not totally. that separated from it. You know, nobody thinks about how good Brittany felt like two weeks later. And then she had to look at her stupid bald head in the mirror. Yeah. She's like, well, thank God I'm rich and I can buy wigs, although not as rich as I thought she gets a she gets a stipend because of her conservatorship. She only actually gets 78 grand a year of what she makes. She gets like an allowance. What? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The uh, the lawyers and her dad have it rigged up so that she doesn't have control of her finances. Jesus they Christ. We're able to prove, I think, sometime after the umbrella incident that she is like unfit to adult. Oh, my so, God. I don't Is that know what that whole Hollywood. free Britney thing was. About? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And Jeez. also there's people who think like she's on pills. There's people who think she's a clone, that the clone is the one who's posting on Instagram, that she's like far gone. Yeah, and see, I'll tell you this. Everyone who I think everyone who I get a weirdo vibe from, I assume is on pills. <laughs> I'm always, I, <laughs> yeah. I think they're all on pills. You ever like if you ever see like a schizo or something or somebody walking down the street screaming to themselves, you just go, oh, they they're on pills, but they didn't take their pills. Right. But right. everything I think though, everybody's mental problem problems really have to do with uh pills <laughs> Anytime either they need them they or they're need their pills them. or they're on them yeah <laughs> it's, it's tricky like how do you get out of it it's like are you just doomed to a life of pills then you can't you got there's got to be a plan to get out of the pills oh God. i don't know no well that's that's why mental health is so fucking important because you know people are spiraling and if they take the pills they're like i hate myself on these and then you don't take yeah. it and then you start fucking you know, eating bullets and shit. Oh God, nobody wants that. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> but it's good because like the pain that we uh, go through in our lives inevitably translates or becomes part of our material. I mean, like, I don't know about you, but I know I got into stand up because I couldn't express myself to my family at all mm. to their faces. I just kept it all inside. I was like, well, they clearly don't care what I think. And if I complain about anything in my life, I'm making a big deal of it and like being <laughs> up fussy. Sad. And I was listening to like some of your album and like there was this one line that I was like, holy shit, this is like my Can I guess the line? Can I guess yes. the line? Okay, guess it, guess it. Is it 
your my my mom saying, "Why do you need a therapist?" Where we? Oh so my god! Yes, yes. <laughs> How did you know? I don't, because that one resonates with me incredibly. I I just I just added that line too. Like someone told me I was doing the bit. And I was doing the first part of the bit where I go, bah, 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 and then, you know, that was the bit. And uh, someone was like, you should actually have your mom say something that she would say to you. And I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then that day, my mom said that to me. And I went, thank you, mom. <laughs> parents, boomer parents take it so personally if you have a therapist. It's like the biggest personal affront. It's like an insult to them. It's like they can't compute like they can't understand like they're like we well you didn't sleep outside so why do you need a therapist you know yeah. like we fed you you always had clothes on your body why on earth would you need a therapist yeah, yeah. why do you the, the line was why do you need a therapist were we so bad <laughs> <laughs> so not only is it like you don't need this thing but it's like guilt it's like just efficiently a little True. guilt jab my my mom and my therapist have this uh, have this just beef that they don't even know about. My mom says that she'll be like, "Why do you need a therapist?" And then my therapist is always like, "It's well, it's what your mom does. It's what you I feel like if they were ever in a room together, they would fight each other or make out. No, um, that would be awesome. <laughs> That's a different genre. Yeah, <laughs> isn't it so funny? Because so much of therapy is unpacking your childhood, and most of us like if we have unhealthy patterns, mm -hmm. if you go back. Like, oh, when you feel upset, you you do this unhealthy thing. Or when you feel rejected, you uh, pull away, you withdraw, you blah, 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 any anything, right? And it's like a lot of this comes from our childhood. And these were coping mechanisms that we developed as kids that you just keep on living with because it's at some point they served you. But mm -hmm. as an adult, they no longer do. So that's the point of therapy is you're like, huh, why do I... Uh, pick the same kind of horrible guy to date or yeah. why uh, do I find myself, am I afraid of success, afraid of failure? Why do I stop myself when I get an opportunity? Do I self-sabotage, exploring yeah. stuff like that? It's not scary topics. It's not like you go to therapy. Um, yes, you do talk about your parents, but it's like, I guess that's what like boomers think therapy is. It's like, uh, we all, we're getting together to shit on you, mom. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, I think uh, I think a lot of people like the that that age think therapy is just in a way going like, well, it's not my fault. It's like how, you know they probably look at it, but my parents both go to therapy, so they know what it's hmm. about. But like, <laughs> so you know, I think a lot of people think that therapy is just going like, tell me I'm the right one in this situation when it's the complete opposite. I had a therapy session before this, and it was just fucking. Our open heart surgery. It was, uh, it was, I know. You I felt, felt like, you felt like right now too open. Uh, yeah. Well, I've I've been trying to go sober, and uh, and last night, you know, just on booze. But then I haven't smoked weed in a very long time. And then last night, I had this horrible show that I did out in Long Island. And, Where in uh, Island, governors? Uh, no, I did it at the pair. Uh, I can't even say actually. Okay, okay. It was a private event. I think it was. Okay. Uh, I think it was, but if anybody knows Long Island, they know it immediately from what I just said. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, just don't, don't be fucking rats. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it was a terrible show. And I just decided to take a 90 milligram edible and uh, I just fucking panicked. I panicked. I felt like I relapsed. I had a, I had a fucking my journal. I, so I open write journal and uh, or like free write journal and it's wild. I don't even want to look at it right now. It's like all over the page. Like the numbers are big. You could totally tell. Like if anybody reading that book would think I'm schizophrenic. <laughs> he was a creative genius. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Here's when he snapped. Well, that's oh, also no. a part of the free writing. You know, I when you know when you free write, sometimes you're like, I, it's going to be crazy when people read this, which is completely a, like the opposite of what you're doing it for. You know, it's supposed it's to be like meditating and and stripping yourself of your ego for a second. And I'm like the whole time I'm going, I can't wait for, you know, this is going to this is like Anne Frank's diary. That's how close to like special this book is. You were like, who has an addict? I don't I don't feel comfortable. <laughs> I, mean, I feel like I live in an attic. What's the book? It's like um, where they tell you, fuck, I forget what it's called, but it's like this book that a lot of comedians read. And the, and the main takeaway is like, is that you have to free write three pages a day, no matter what. 
Oh, I don't know. What the hell is it called? Sounds- and I didn't know if like that was uh, something you were starting up. It's no, I, to, um, it's supposed to just open up the channels, right? It's not that you're going to be writing anything all that brilliant right away, but it's just supposed to like open up so you can flow. So inspiration can flow out of you. No, I have no desire to turn anything that I'm saying in that book into a joke. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just like writing, dude. I'm like, you, you got to get it out because as comics, we're the majority of us writing is usually like, yeah, the audience will think this is clever and funny, you know, but when you're just free writing your feelings, you it's really um, it's really therapeutic. You know, it's very like, scary. I used to keep a diary and then I stopped because I was like, but what if someone reads this? Like, I don't keep one now because I'm like, if my boyfriend reads it, like, I don't want him to read something that would upset him. So I just don't have a diary. Oh, uh, baby, you got to You got to take that and you got to throw that right out the fucking window because that's what's stopping you. If you just go, there's no way anybody could read this. And if your boyfriend does read it, then you that's an argument. You know, I'll just then, put my vibrator on top of it in a drawer. I don't know. I don't know what I'll do. <laughs> I'll put fuzzy pink handcuffs on it. I'll yeah, cover or, it in lube. I don't or know. Or tampons. They will never. Yes, it. I'll put it in a tampon box. You're so smart. Oh, or, no. or and, oh, and no. I know your boyfriend, and I know he's a really good guy, but I'm just going to say this. You could also, don't get mad at me, but uh, your boy, if, uh, Frank, right? You're still there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Frank, don't get mad at me, but you can also <laughs> date someone who won't look at your diary. And I don't think he would. I th- I don't think he would. It it comes from my lifetime of having no privacy. Like I grew up sharing a room with my sister. I don't know about your parents, but my there were no boundaries. Like my mom would like they would get mad. My parents would get mad at us if we were to shut the door or lock the bedroom door. And Ew. I had my mom would barge in on me on the bathroom all the time just because like it oh, was you were, kind like, of. Kidding? I don't know. She would just be like, I have to get my eyebrow pencil. She would have to get something. She would get mad if there was a locked door. So then I just kind of learned to never lock doors. Cause you know, I mean, we didn't have a huge family. There was five of us in there. I had a brother and sister. Um, yeah. I just figured like, well, I don't want someone to get mad in case they have to come in here. I never had my own space. So I just was like, yeah. learn to not need it or want it. Oh my so, God. It was. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's probably a few times I saw my dad naked that I probably didn't nice. care to. Um, Ew, how old? How old? How old were you when the last time you saw your? Oh God! I mean, I remember the last bath that my dad gave me, and I just was like, I remember it clearly, so vividly. Um, Did God, you have boobs I, at the time? I want no, because I developed like pretty late. Like I remember okay. being like. I didn't get my period till 14 at gymnastics camp. I didn't even get boobs really till college. Last year. Till okay. last. Yeah. Yeah. I had been stuffing them this whole time. I think I was, <laughs> oh God, I want to say that I was seven or eight years old. And I remember okay. I was in the bathtub and I was like so conscious. I had my knees like up against my chest as far as I could put them. So I'm oh sitting God. down in the bath, but I just like, I didn't have, I know I didn't have boobs, but I know I was, I was starting to get self conscious. So I had my knees like, up against my chest and uh i remember he would like he was like putting water like washing my hair or something and i just remember thinking like yep this is i think this is the last one wow. and then, now that i'm saying that i was conscious enough to like know that this is the last bath like, yeah that tells me it probably should have been before that <laughs> Way a lot before-, before that yeah but i also remember like i do remember taking baths with my mom to a point where i was like was i too like tall at some point <laughs> like i remember being like not a kid doing that i mean a kid obviously i wasn't like 26 but <laughs> i i remember like i remember being like this is weird like i still remember what my mom's boobs looked like you know what I mean? I know. <laughs> yes, I still remember my dad's dick looked like, and I even have this joke that I made from the experience. And I was, and I, I know it. Like some people, are like, oh, you're explaining your joke. That's losery. But it's like no. I have from that experience. I have this joke where I'm like, yeah, I don't know. His dad, his dick just looked really big to me, and I don't know if because it actually was big or I was small, like I was a kid. I yeah. just know, and then I just know that it looked really big in my little hand and like the the that's obviously funny. the last part is the joke part but it makes yeah. it sound like fucking horrible that's like, really funny my dad yeah. his penis in my hand but like <laughs> yeah, it's course. sick and it's like uh well, but it gets a well, laugh. I think everybody i think everybody has that experience because we've all seen our dad's dick at some point like <laughs> I rem- yeah it, it's it's always big it was it's always like a big fat dad dick 
you know? <laughs> it's a dick that's worked, you know, like my dad, like he was a blue collar, he was a landscaper growing up. It's like his dick, you could tell it had it was tired. It always looked like it had put in a long day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like too tired to do shit. Yeah, my dad's know? dick always came in and put the he put the yellow helmet onto the hat hat rack. Oh and yeah, I, the coat I'd rack. Like, I'd be like, Dad's dick, well, how's it going? And he, he goes, you know, it's just been a long day. You know? Yeah, my dad's dick always looked like it was about to complain about dinner being late. Yeah. Or um, yeah, just like Yeah, my dad's dick should go to therapy because it looks yes. like it's got a lot of shit that it's holding in. It looked heavy with regret. It looked heavy yeah. with you know, like it had a lot Anxiety on it. Anxiety about the past. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I could tell there's a lot of issues about his own dad in there. I was like, this is, you're carrying a lot on your shoulders yeah. there, Dick, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, my dad's dick is is constantly thinking about his dad's dick, you know? Yes, <laughs> yes, and that, the, the, all the dicks that that dick has seen, and and, yeah, and it's yeah. like I'm imagining a little therapist couch where, like, the balls just kick their feet up, you know? But it is true, like, all this, like, past bullshit with our parents, like, so fucked us up, but... At a certain point, you go, when is that? When do I got to stop fucking thinking about that Freudian bullshit and just start going like, hey, you know, I'm an adult. I can uh, I, I should start taking responsibility for myself, you know? Yeah, because you don't. It's nice to know when you first get into therapy, you're excited because you're like, wow, it's not that I suck. It's that it's that at first you are like, yes, it's my parents fault. And that's kind of exciting because it's great when things aren't your fault. But then you're like, OK, you don't want to be like 40 years old, still complaining about your parents. So it's like yeah. you you understand that. And then you have to like, OK, how do I how do I move forward with this information? Because again, and then I'm at the place where I'm like, oh, my parents were just people doing the best they could with what they had at the mm -hmm. time. And neither had the, of them had ever gone to therapy. So you know, you're dealing with like levels of unconscious patterns and all their, you know, drama yeah. too. Cause my dad had serious baggage about his own dad. Like and I mentioned this on other, other podcasts, but like my dad's dad was a Mooney, which is basically a cult where he would like get like my, so my dad's dad would give his money, like the family's money to this Mooney cult and then ended up divorcing my dad's mom, Oma, cause that's the German side. Okay. And got and participated in a mass marriage, married some random Asian lady. What? So, and I think my dad never really like had it out, like expressed himself. Cause I remember he yeah. was so fucking angry when Max died, his dad. Um, I didn't even go to the funeral cause I was in college at the time. But what I heard wow. from my sister is like, yeah, dad got really mad. mad. He like yelled something at, at the at funeral the and, yeah, yeah, you had a like this sounds like a lifetime movie. Yelled something at the casket, kicked dirt around. Like, oh my I was like, God, I this, wish I was there. I wish I had this seen like it. It's like a sad episode of Shameless. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. So, wow. man, and you think it ends when someone dies. No, it doesn't. Like, it's like no. you have to be willing to unpack. That's why, yeah, that's why you got to unpack shit. everything immediately. Because if that person dies and you didn't say what you had to say to them, it's like, then you're going to the fucking graveyard and just screaming at their at the land, you know? Screaming at the land. Yeah. Holy no, shit. pull it back up. I'm not finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you start digging them up to scream at their skeleton? Like, Sir, I have to. My shift ends. At <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just like, all right. Yeah, my shift ends in two minutes. Just do whatever you need to do, buddy. <laughs> That's fucking nuts, though. Wow. What a story. Who? Yeah. So you feel but, bad. You, know, you feel bad. At the same point, you're like, you have to get over it. Exactly. And as, and as like a, an, a parent at a certain point, you have to go, look, I'm not the fucking I'm not I'm not the son anymore. I'm the dad. OK, so I have to take everything that I had with that. My dad and just go. It is what it is. Move the fuck on. Right. Yeah. Like what what good is it to penalize like at this point now? My my dad's the only one that's like alive still. So it's like, what good is it going to do to just I don't know. You, it helps me when I think of my dad. Or, and also my mom at the time as just this is a limited person like not that I'm thinking of them as retarded but I'm just like uh -huh. no they have limitations they're like not able to talk about x y and z or be self-aware in this way not that I'm better than them but just uh, -huh. uh I am a little bit better than that no <laughs> I think you are I think you are <laughs> sounds like you are uh it's a process though right because it's like 
you're always me and i think uh the unit whatever the universe like will sometimes bring you somebody uh like bring someone into your life it could be like romantic or not even mm -hmm. just sometimes reminding you of your old habits and your old like way of reacting and then totally. it's like a trigger it's like oh do i choose the old way or do i choose like this new healthier way of dealing well, with it's so easy to go into your old habits and shit and that's something i'm constantly fighting i'm i'm just like you know I, i'll 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 be good for like a couple of weeks and then I'll do something that's just completely my old habits, just sabotaging myself and and, um, you know, running away from whatever I'm I whatever responsibilities I have, you know, taking the easy way out of a lot of things. And it fucking sucks. You just have to be on top of your your shit. Would you know? those patterns ever with that self-sabotage stuff, would that ever seep into comedy? Because my I mean, like like my opinion of you or my like I like what I would see you I would I thought you were so dedicated like I don't know how long you've been doing comedy but I remember I just started this like every time I was at New, New York Comedy Club you would be there and you'd be there like for like what seemed like all night and I was like oh I was like wow he's really dedicated he's like really uh serious about comedy and he's doing this and it was like very cool for me to see I was like all right oh, like an yeah I'm 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 very rarely um, self-sabotaging when it comes to stand-up or like my career or anything. Everything I do, I kind of, uh, you know, I really flush out of my head and I go, what's the best for me? Um, but it's just everything else. I, uh, I I just, you know, I've been trying to um, go to these AA meetings and stuff. And, and a part of me just wants to go, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe I'm just like, maybe I just don't drink and that's fine. But then I'm like, oh, no, I'm just running away from something I feel uncomfortable in. Hmm. You know? What's the uncomfortable? Like the idea that you're not going to drink again or the or confronting why you drink? I think just being being in that in this different environment of like helping myself. I like I run away from anything that like helps me a hmm. like helps. Like, you know, if I really want to talk to somebody like last week, I really wanted to I really needed to talk to somebody. But. I wanted them to call me, you know, but what? I, so I was like, if they don't call me, then, you know, they're, they don't like they don't, me. They don't I, care. And then, yeah. And yeah. When I should have just picked up the phone and went, hi, I need to talk to you. You know, I, I like shit like that. Yes. And I'm just constantly not doing that because I'm like, well, I'm just constantly not doing what's best for me. <laughs> you know, I, but I totally sympathize with that because I'm, I'm a, I'm an empathetic person. I feel like because of my whatever childhood, I'm very good at picking up other people's moods, figuring out what they need. Mm -hmm. um, like that's, I think one of the reasons why my sense of humor developed is because I was like, Ooh, like I can make somebody happy when they're sad or I can like yeah. see my parents fight. And then I have the ability to pick my mom up and make her laugh. Like, wow, I feel powerful. And yeah. I would do, do the same for my sister. And, um, so it's like when you're someone who's empathetic and sees needs in others and you meet those needs, you kind of expect that of other people as well. You, you're like, why, why am not, you know me, you know that I, can't you tell that I have these needs? I can tell when you have needs. And it's like, yeah. that was a hard like sort of therapy lesson for me too, is like, you just have to be so overly clear with people and like what to you feels like overly communicating and stating the obvious is really just, actually articulating your needs which sucks but it's like you have to just take yourself by the hand and it's be like so okay hard. we're gonna it's ask for what so, we need it's yeah. so hard i thought i've always thought i was you know i would say i'm i'm very i'm more vulnerable i'm more introspective uh i'm more you know open than probably the average person but i've just learned recently that there's so much more shit that i have to fucking un like there's so much more that i have to to dig deep. I thought I was at the center, you know, I mean, I didn't think I was like completely at it. Like, you know, I, when I meditate, I'm like, Oh, this is good. This feels good. I haven't, I don't normally feel like this. And, but so I'm like, okay, so there's still some more stuff, but then I, this whole past couple of weeks, I've just been like, wow, I really, really have not even touched the surface. I need mm. to, fucking, I need to really just dig down deep and, and, become more vulnerable, become more, uh, you know, I've been going to therapy for like three years and I was like, Oh, this is the peak of where I'm supposed to be at mentally. I'm doing great. This is it. Yeah. I'm asking my therapist, like, when do I get my graduation hat? Like when have I, I, <sighs> I started therapy, like, <laughs> right. I started therapy, like after my mom was diagnosed with like terminal brain cancer. Cause I was like, mm -hmm. I know this isn't going to end well. 
I know I have other shit I want. I want to talk about stagnation in my relationship too. So I was like, yeah. let me like get myself ready so that like, I was thinking like if or when she does die, I don't completely fall apart and then I'm useless to everyone and I can't do anything. Um, but I was thinking like, oh, I've been, I've been at it now maybe four years. Like, uh, am I done with therapy? And then I was fine. Like the next week I have a new thing to talk about. Of course. Yeah. yeah. I had a, I had a thought the other day. I was like, you know, it's so funny. And so like, um, I guess there's kind of like a, uh, ego to it, but I was like, I think I'm more, I think I have to go to a deeper part of my brain. I think talk mm. therapy is, uh, was good for that many years, but now maybe I need to develop some sort of other kind of therapy, maybe group talk therapy or, you know, hypnosis or something i was like i you know it's so it's so cocky of me to be like okay i'm done i think i'm better than what this guy can give me i think i have to go on to the next level of my of my self-care you know that's good it's like you need you outgrow people you outgrow modalities it's like the fact that you're even trying to meditate like says so much about your dedication to your own like reaching your own potential like that was something i was so afraid to do forever and i always talk about it and be like all right well now this year is the year i'm going to meditate but i've only done it like twice so it's yeah. i don't know why i'm scared to just sit with no thoughts because well, I always think I'm wasting time. Like, oh, it's also be so done. hard. It's like it's every time I, because I I tried to meditate over the years, and I'm like, this is I'm just falling asleep sitting up. But then <laughs> last night when I was like tripping balls off of this 90 milligram edible, that like for sure I thought I I had the feeling of oh I'm relapsing. This is a relapse because oh, no. I'm I'm in AA and all that for for booze or whatever i maybe i shouldn't even be talking about it. i'm so new i don't i don't understand the etiquette but uh <laughs> but i'm not in anything i'm not talking to anybody about the weed issue too so hmm. i really felt because i've been fucking i've been white knuckling uh you know this planet for uh a long time now i've been 49 days i guess and then i uh and then i just took the 90 90 milligram edible i usually do that's even that's crazy for me when i was smoking weed and then I, I just didn't uh, know how that sounds like a lot. It's a fucking nightmare. It was a nightmare. How and long did I, it last? Was it like an all night it, it, trip it, it or something from like eight to to I started feeling a little bit more normal around like 1130. OK, OK. So Yeah, it was like, you know, whatever. But I, I put on this meditation thing and I actually felt what they were talking about. Like I sat wow. there for I think 20 minutes I did it. And you know, if you you know when you meditate and they're like, think about the top of your head. Are you feeling yeah. little, and cover yourself in a white light, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I felt it. I felt it. I felt the little tinglies on my forehead. I felt everything. I felt the sinking of my shoulders. I felt everything that they were talking about. And I was like, this is definitely the edible, but this if this was meditation, I would do this every day. Cause then you, you, then you like open your eyes, you feel good. But then I just went immediately straight back to panicking. Oh man. And like, mm. what is it just sort of like free flowing anxiety or is it a specific panic? It's, it's all specific stuff, but it's like, you know, somebody, somebody messaged me while I was like fucking super high and they were like, ha, it was like somebody who I, uh, cause I have a problem with where if I feel betrayed, I think I cut people out of my life. That's like my mm. fact setting oh god is to yeah just cutting anybody out of my life who who which is another way of running away from the problem and everything and uh so i yeah so i uh i somebody who i haven't been talking to for a couple of months messaged me while like at like the peak of the trip and i was just they were just like hi i love you and i miss you and uh are you mad at me and i i was just like i couldn't even hit my eyes were like vibrating out of my skull and i was like <sighs> But it was on Instagram. So they saw that I seen it, which, by the way, wh who's asking for the scene technology? No Who one wants, wants that. Who Nobody wants their thing to be seen. That brings nothing no. to pain. No, it, it helps no one. It's like if they're going to respond, they're going to respond. It's like it's just nice to hold that. Well, it's like then send the message again. I don't know. You don't need the scene. Yeah, it's like this is why we have mailmen. So I don't have yeah. to see you open my letter. You fucking idiot. So anyway, so it was on. So I went, okay, I have to respond to this. And I just went, I am. Hi, I miss you too. I love you too. 
I am peeved at you, but I I am tripping balls right now, so I have to uh, call you tomorrow. I have to. Yeah, I was like, I would not be able to articulate what I need to say right now, so uh, I will talk to you tomorrow. And I was like, just even doing that, I was like, "Ah, ah," and then I had to like go back into the trip, and I'm like, "Ah, ah," like, I'm like Like, punching the 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 air and everything. (laughs) That's really good that you said I'm that I am peeved at you. That's that's a good. I mean, like. I think a lot of times you feel pressure, big. Like, well, everything's okay. Cause there is part of me that really hates conflict and oh, wants, course. wants everyone to be cool with me. But then I've only started recently, like both therapy. And then also like, I think uh, my boyfriend is helping me with this too. Like when someone treats you badly, like letting them know it and setting up a boundary. And then as a result, that person like kind of sees their way out of your life, which is like, Oh no, like I caused that. But it's like, no, you just like, didn't want to put up with this shitty treatment or they like treat you differently and it's like oh you're disrespecting me it's like no i'm just standing up for myself which to you feels like disrespect because it's coming out of nowhere well for a long time i mean that comes from anxiety and it comes from insecurities of being like well if i i set if i if i set this uh you know line in the sand and the person wants to cross it, maybe I should let them cross it because if, if I don't let them, then they might not ever talk to me again or something. But then you, you just gotta like, you just gotta be like, well, if they cross it and I set that line and I said, do not cross this line and they cross it, then that's someone I don't want in my life anyway. You know, mm-hmm. I have to like, I have to go like, okay, well, uh, I'm telling you right now, don't cross it. You crossed it. So if you cross this line, uh, you're not going to see me again or, or we're going to have an issue. Yeah. Do you feel like so, you're ready to talk to that person about why you're peeved at them? Yeah, of course. I have so many phone calls to make today. I have oh, tons- wow. That's great. Yeah. I, yeah, I just did therapy before this. And I, I was like, you know, this person pissed me off. And I said this to this person. And I, and he was just like, look, sounds like you got a, a lot of calls to make today. And I was just like, yeah. Uh, I have about four calls to make. So. Oh, wow. And these are all just, I guess, like, yeah, just friend like, calls stuff. Yeah, just like interpersonal calls conflicts between friends phone calls are so good and i'm i always like i hesitate from doing phone calls because i'm like why can't i just text but it's like uh you always feel better after a phone call it's like and that's how people used to always solely communicate was fucking phone calls Uh, well before that we could argue that people only solely communicated through text because like letters letters right But like back then you had to be super articulate and like say and like completely self-aware and lucid on how you feel because (laughs) because the letter is not getting there till like, I don't know, fucking three weeks, like a fortnight or whatever. So you go like, my dearest Suzanne, my feelings (laughs) are this, you know, and then they have to read it and everything. But text is so bad, man. It's so gross, you know, so you got to like they got to hear it in your voice. You know, do you think that back in the day with like if there was some guy writing letters to like his he's angry at his like he found like his wife had an assorted affair or something. It's like, you know, how people send like a rant, like text, 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 text. Do you think he just sends a letter and then he's like, and another thing, you know, yeah. like yeah, and then there's yeah, just yeah. and then Anne or Helen gets like four letters and then she's like, oh, shit. No, that's why people because you only had that one shot within the the couple of weeks. So that's why people would go to their fireplace and sit at their little thing and have the, <laughs> the, 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 the feather and the ink, and they would write pages and pages and pages upon how they felt about something, you know, cause you're like, I have to get this all out. They wow. wouldn't even send it for a couple of days. I don't think. Right? Probably not. No, they sit on it and it's like, well, if you, you have to really think about it because like, I'm sure ink is expensive and parchment or paper. Oh yeah, know. totally, totally. Yeah, so it's you know it's uh, a little stamp on the back. Yeah, yeah. So I'm feeling very much like an open wound right now, but I, I guess it's all, it's all a good thing. You're you wounded. Know? Yeah, it is I'm, good I'm, thing. I'm a broken boy. What do you want from me? When's you your know? birthday? June fourth. So you're a Gemini. Oh yeah. So you're a Gemini. Are you, so are you're you, you the, uh, kind you know, of. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Um. Well. Astrology matters more when you look at someone's whole chart and you see where the other planets were because it doesn't always come down to the sun sign. But I would say like, yeah, as a Gemini, it's good that you're confronting these issues around communication because that's Why? like Gemini is uh, it's like a, one of the big communication signs. Like it's a, you're an air sign and Whoa, I don't, cool. yeah, yeah. 
16. And like, I, I think the Gemini is like, has to do with the twins. Cause you're, so you're dealing like two, two versions of yourself. Like that's your classical Gemini conflict is you're dealing with two different versions of yourself. Whoa. That's so fucking true. I mean, Whoa. I think, I think with uh showbiz and whatever, we all have that imposter syndrome and like, we always feel like a phony, you know, but yeah. I didn't know it was a, I don't know. It was a, a sign thing. It's a, it is sometimes a sign thing. And like when you when you look at like patterns or sometimes strengths uh, mm. are correlate to like astrology, it's it's cool shit. And it's like something I want to get more into. I have books. I have things like who there's this one comic who does. She'll read your chart on a podcast. What the fuck is her name? Kate Wolf. <sighs> no, she I think she does it, too. But um, damn, her name is escaping me. Well, well, shoot. If I think of it later, I'll send it to you. What's your sign? Scorpio. So I have the tendency to brood big time, like get like if I'm uh, like un unevolved or un like if you're not seeing the light, you can get very into vengeance, vengefulness, revenge. Oh, weird. All the, that's all the same thing. Like um, a villain. Yes, you can definitely be like a villain because it's like you it's like that the empathy can be used for evil. Cause it's like, you can get into the center of people and know what hurt them and, wow. and can like deliver it. Um, but it's like, you're trying to get away from that. And like, when you're seeing the light, it's more like, um, yeah, like serving others and, uh, God, there's just like so much Whoa, I don't, know. So I don't know, like, blob about astrology, but like, yeah, I think I've, I spent a lot of times being like, Oh, okay. I know when I'm get when I'm, when I'm this way, it's like, I'm, my light is dim and I'm, low uh, vibrate um low vibration or whatever so wow what's yeah. uh what's my uh like what's my what's my compatible sign like oh um i can look it up yeah let's see please. let's see i thought you would know uh, that off the top who of your head. is gemini actually frank is a gemini gemini compatible with Da, 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 da. And of course, it's like you can't always trust like every ad that you see that comes well, up. I, I used to read my uh, my my horoscope, and I just got to a point where I'm like, they're just saying things that I think can relate to anybody, right? Uh, right. That's that's why you do have to look more deeper into something like a chart. Uh, let me get this up here. Da, da, da. This is just like I don't even know if this is a verified website, so I can't. So it's saying Gemini and Aries could be good. Gemini and Taurus, Gemini and Gemini. Whoa. Gemini and Leo, Gemini and Virgo. Oh, but this actually goes through everything. Like if it's good or bad. Okay. Wow. All right. Yeah. Send later. that to me. Cause I will read this. Give me an example of someone like, or a sign to put you with. Uh, let's see. Gemini and Gemini. Okay, okay, okay. Do, 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 do. Gemini versus Gemini sounds like a he, 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 he. <laughs> Look how long that is. That's right. No, you're like, oh, fuck this. I'm going to check out. Open astrology shit is like everything they send you is like 16 paragraphs. Um, when we think of two Gemini in a sexual relationship, it's okay if we laugh a little. The image that comes to mind could easily be the image of two people with split personalities trying to have sex by banging their heads together. I don't know if I even like this website. Um, <laughs> It's very rare for a Gemini as an air sign to be practical and find the way to manifest what they've read or heard about in the realm of reality and physical body. Their biggest quality is their ability to learn. With their desire to become great lovers, they will absorb knowledge through each of their relationships like a sponge. Two Gemini together will share information and coordinate their previous experiences with one another. They will be more satisfied when they teach their partner something. Than they will by sex itself, which is very true of Frank. He's more, he's, it, it, he's like more of someone who's turned on mentally. Mm -hmm. Like okay. if you, like he can't connect with just it, like, luckily I'm just, a, I'm not a vapid hot chick, you know, <laughs> like, but he <laughs> has to connect with somebody's mind and like their goals and their thoughts. And like, that's the, he's like the prime example of, of like your brain being your, the biggest sex organ. Wow. Um, Da, 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 da. yeah sexual life can become empty when the excitement has passed that's a very gemini thing like if, if it's like fleeting if you're just going like that's why gemini's can get to a thing where like they're probably just like i mean every every sign can get into a place where they're having one night stands but yeah gemini you like i mean a lot of signs like novelty but if it's a fleeting novelty you you can move on quickly oh fuck i hate that 
I'm um, so afraid always when it comes to relationships that I'm going to, it's going to fleet. Like they're going to stop liking me or I'm going to stop liking them. Mm, yeah. Gemini and trust. They may not trust each other, but they really don't care. They both but know they themselves. Really it's easy to understand each other in those flaky, superficial and changeable moods. Basically one of them is going to move in two minutes and the other one in three. So how can they trust each other to stay? <laughs> if they knew their own next move, they might be able to build the trust with someone similar to them. This is not something that will bother them. On the contrary, it will give them the freedom to be themselves, but rarely keep them in a relationship for too long. Wow. This is so, I mean, like, I remember when Frank and I first got together, I was looking up all this shit for us because I'm a Scorpio and I was not uh -huh. seeing a lot of you guys are compatible. And I was like, fuck, this is never going to last. So maybe that was a good lesson for me that like, wow, you know, astrology isn't the end all be all. But then I think that he has a Taurus moon. And I think that really connects with my Scorpio son in a way that's very okay. co compatible because like, no, no one is ever just like a classic Gemini. No one is ever just the characteristics of the sun sign because you you do have to take in consideration like the moon is a big one your moon placement is a big one but like mm -hmm. the more you talk to people who know a lot about astrology like other planets are have a meaningful like one planet has to do with your communication what i think venus has to do with your feelings about um like uh, motherhood or your your own mom or like feelings about women okay so it, it's like it, it gets deep so it's like it's good to look at a whole chart I mean, like the, yeah. the flimsy flim flam, you know, uh, magazine astrology is fun. It's fun to be like, what's my thing for the day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like, yeah, it's 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 if you really want to know, you have to look in way deeper. I think with astrology, I'm just like, I don't know. I don't want to like base <laughs> how I feel about myself and my life and my whatever relationships based yeah. on whatever these fuckos are saying. I think I could just figure it out from there. But if I because such I a Gemini thing more. to say, is it? <laughs> Is it? <laughs> yeah, because sure. you like to feel like you have uh, control. I don't know. A lot of people feel, like to feel like they have control, uh -huh. but it's like you can. Um, some people, it's like you can believe more in what you what you see, what you've experienced. It's also like some people are more like spiritual and more grounded in their experiences, like like grounded in reality. Like I, I can only trust what I've experienced, what I see, what I hear, what I feel. Where yeah. some people are in the clouds and they're all about like, you know meditation and, and god and um you know so yeah i'm a little bit more like that i feel like you got to look kind of inward to figure out what you are because everybody's different you know we've all gone through the these these different fucking things so you have to like be like well no website is going to tell me how i'm going to react to something I'll yeah. only only i will tell myself how to react because i know myself the most of course and and i would never say that astrology is a substitute for like therapy or looking within or meditation mm -hmm. um i think it's cool i think it's a nice add-on just like i would never rely on crystals to like cure a disease i'd be like oh uh -huh. no let's look at what we're eating let's yeah, look at the yeah, supplements yeah. yeah yeah do you do you uh do you use like crystals and stuff do you put do you do, are you like, i have them out i'm into them i have books on them they're out but it's like i'm not like you know laying down with them covering my body you know yeah I'm not, like yeah. i'm not at that level yet yeah, I had a buddy who in uh, high school was super into crystals and everything. He would carry around all these crystals and, you know, and I like, you know, was bitching about relationships and women and everything. And he gave me that like rose quartz and he's like, so <gasps> yes, help, that's so yep, 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 yep. That the rose quartz is all about. It's the like the love romantic stone. It's like also friendship love. It's like love overall. And then there are certain stones that like help yeah. if you, you know, like if you feel like you need protection if it's there's certain because i got into it because i'm like oh i think it was was it citron i forget what it was but certain stones helped it was a combination of creativity and bravery and i was like oh that's fucking stand up right there it's like yeah. confidence on stage and uh just like opening up your creativity so did you writing like, put that, did you put that crystal in your pocket when you would like go up on stage sometimes yeah i would stick a certain whatever crystal was like i'd have them in my bra i'd have some in my pocket i have a couple in my purse yeah oh yeah there's so many times where like at the end of the day i take off my bra at night and then you hear like <laughs> clack 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 like, you hear, <laughs> a like, bunch of rocks fall you out just hear like and you're like oh god right i had a fucking labradorite in my bra you know like, so fucking funny yeah i used to keep the rose quartz in my pocket and be like this will help me but it just I just became a weirdo with a pink <laughs> rock in my pocket. 
<laughs> like not right who knows right and then you also have to like cleanse the crystals like they get cleansed yeah and they get their powers back or rejuvenated like put them putting them in the sun some people bury them in soil um what? That's yeah, crazy. there's like there's you different ways you can like like a, cleanse a tree your crystals. Rose out of that. <laughs> your dick grows an inch. You're like, wow, it works. <laughs> oh, wow, rose quartz. <laughs> wow, rose. Thanks, rose quartz. <laughs> thanks, rose quartz. <laughs> 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 and yeah, they're supposed that, to be reinvigorated. Like the way they say that you how you choose a crystal, even if you don't know shit about crystals, go into a crystal store and like literally they say like whatever calls to you like visually okay. sometimes okay. Uh, sometimes it'll be a color like i know that blue stones blue and green stones have to do with the throat chakra so that's like communicating Whoa. that's like being um yeah explain like you're explaining it, it is it's communication basically so it's like being upfront and like speaking um, your mind right i have a crystal right over there i have no idea what it does if i show you do you think you know Ooh, maybe yeah hold on let me, let me... <laughs> like here i thought we were going to be talking about comedy for this whole time but we're talking about the shit that i like mm -hmm. crystals with chrissy all right, all right. Okay. i'm so afraid of silence huh if i i, I was just talking about uh that I thought that we were gonna. Okay, that looks like sel selenite. Selenite. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold it up to the light. Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so, so that's hard. a healing. That's I selenite. That's selenite. That's a uh, that's a healing crystal. I bought a shit ton of those for my mom when she had cancer. <laughs> I guess they didn't oh, work. God. No, um, All right. no, but they're like it's cleansing. Like people will use selenite rods to just like do a whole body clean. That's a good one, I think, for like overall like soul cleansing, and I think like physical health really yeah yeah i'm gonna look it up so what should i do with this fucking thing and how do people know <laughs> like what do people how do people know how do you how did somebody this is why i'm skeptical about how it. How do, do people you, know what it does the rock and go hmm, i guess i feel cleansed yeah you know? that's a really good question yeah how who with anything who decides what the hell it is like who perceives what the crystals do yeah. i am gonna just share the screen there's, there's is... chrissy being afraid of the silence again i love silence here we go <laughs> you need selenite if does it feel like there's a heavy or dense energy surrounding you or simply lingering in the air does your space feel dark or stuffy these are signs that there's a buildup of stagnant energy within your energy field or environment it's time to clear the energy and raise the vibration and a selenite crystal is That's perfect awesome. for the job nice so what do I do with this thing? What should I do? Should I sleep with it on my forehead? Should I meditate it? Meditate with it in on in my hand or something? Stick it in your butt. No, should here we go. Butt? They're from uh, Mexico, Morocco, and the U.S. So, yes, it was all about purification, clearing, and positive energy. I was kind of right. So, okay. Energy clearing. You may not realize it, but you pick up a lot of energy throughout your day and your lifetime. It's not all good energy. If you think about your energy field like your house, you got to dust it and clean it. I get that. All right, now okay. what to do with okay. it? Inside. How to use your selenite crystal. Ready? Yes. Oh, there's a big one. Jesus, that one could be a sex toy. Christ, look at that. Is this coming up on the uh, stream? It is. Okay. Um, this is the most powerful way to use your selenite crystal. Da, 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 da. By wearing selenite jewelry, carrying the stone, placing it in your home, you can ensure that your energy and your environment are is clear and cleansed at all time. I've had this in my home for so long that I feel like it's done nothing. Okay. Like, <laughs> like I feel like I maybe it's done. Maybe maybe if I get rid of it, it things will change. I don't know. Really? If you if it's actually that can be a thing too. If you're over, it could even be that piece. You know what I mean? Like if you're if you pick it up, that's the thing. Put it in the sun. That's what I would do. I would put it in the sun for a few okay. hours. Maybe leave it on a windowsill or in a sunny spot for like the rest of the day, right? Okay. And then pick it up tomorrow. And if you like, if you if you feel nothing. Then okay. it's like it served its purpose. A lot of times people will say if you're wearing crystal, a bracelet or jewelry and it breaks, it's like the crystal has served its purpose or like you need a, uh, you know, it's no longer needed for your life or whatever you're working on. So it's like okay. pick it up tomorrow. If you feel nothing and you're not, it's like not doing anything for you, then yeah. then maybe it's either like that particular crystal or it's like, yeah, if you've had it forever, then. God, it's so strange that it's like, it's like I'm very into feeling trying to feel spiritual and trying to 
you know, learn about myself. And I know that there is a higher power, whether that be your in yourself or whatever. I know that there's more to this universe. But then I look at a crystal and I'm like, what is this bullshit? If there, if I if I could buy this at a Claire's, then <laughs> then this cannot yeah. be this cannot work. They say maybe carrying it around is better. Um, carrying it in your pocket allows you to carry your very own energetic purifier with you. Whenever you find your energy feeling heavy or dense, hold the stone over your chest and take three deep breaths. Okay, let me try. <sighs> if, I think it just feels good to breathe. I think people are like, oh yeah, breathe, breathe and then you'll feel good with the crystal. Like, but it's, yeah. They say for a powerful cleansing energy of your space, place one selenite point in each of the four corners of a room to seal the energy with positivity and cleanse it of negativity. Maybe that's it. Maybe you just Maybe that's what you I need should do. three more. <laughs> what if it's a huge grift? Great. Can't just wait. Like... Yeah. Now I have to go to Amazon, buy some fucking crystals. No, you know what you need is more crystals. That's how you help. Yeah, that's, it's a fucking <laughs> scam. This whole thing's a scam. It's, like a it's a scam, scheme. you know, by Big Crystal. Yeah. By Big Crystal. Yeah. By, by Crystal Corp. And then the next website's like, oh, you need 20. <laughs> yeah, right. You need to buy uh, buy 2,000. Buy in bulk. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, it's fucking, it's crazy. Oh, um, it's good to try and, you know, yeah. um, be a little bit more conscious about the self-care. Like even today, I after like that, uh, you know, I'm weary to call it a relapse, but that's how it felt. But like, I, I'm so, I'm so clouded right now. It's like crazy. Hmm. Uh, in your head? Or in your yeah. like, does your did you do you feel like tight? Do you feel like I feel very tight and I'm very clouded. What do I do? Take a really uh, go outside, oh, yeah. get a, get some sunlight, get some vitamin D. Okay, come back, take a take a shower, take a hot shower. Those are good cleansing things. Like whenever know, you yeah. don't know what to do, go outside and get in the sunlight. Yes, I know. Exactly I'm gonna go outside and I'm going to grab a cup of coffee yes. and I'm going to enjoy the sunlight a little bit. Yeah. I met I, a guy once who said you need to put your <laughs> – this was this guy in D.C. who was, like, pro-foreskin. Like, you'd meet him you'd be like, oh, his, he's crazy. His name's Prometheus, and he thinks everybody should have a foreskin. Prometheus and pro-foreskin? Yes, yes. And he, you let him talk long enough. He's like, you know what you really need to do is put your taint in sunlight. You know, just like uh, – just. He ain't wrong about that. I actually I read that like, wow. about, about taking your balls and dick out and, and sitting in the sun and just uh, living the sun. <laughs> like a dick. lizard. I heard about that. Yeah. 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 Just like a lizard. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that. I'll go get a coffee. I'll go to the park. <laughs> I'll find a nice. Find a nice rock. <laughs> rock. Just like a lizard and just take my fucking balls out and just let the sun hit touch my penis. Yeah. And just wait for the cops to come. And then hopefully by then it will. You have. You know, taking in enough vitamin yeah, D that I can run. Yes, <laughs> then they, that's your exercise. You get the blood flowing. That time yeah, you're I, home. I hope this podcast is good. I feel I'm too. I'm so clouded that I'm like, oh god, I, I'm such a terrible guest right now. No, you're a great guest. You were very open, and you're easy to talk to, and oh, you're god. you're a good person. You're a good soul, and your album is fucking funny. And uh, I'm really proud of you for getting it out there. Not only just getting out an album, but like with the circumstances of the last year um that's very cool yeah yeah thank you so much yeah it was um you know it's it feels good to have worked on something like i feel uh i feel completely good in that sense like i feel like you know career wise i'm exactly where i want to be ironically because we don't have a career that much anymore <laughs> so but you know i'll give it a couple of weeks and then i'll be back to panicking and spiraling no you just gotta like i don't know if writing your goals down helps or like making lists. I don't know. You got to see like what works for you, but it's good. It's, help. Yeah. I think that's the thing is growth and healing are messy and they're nonlinear. And, um, so you just like, just walk, you got to walk through it, you know, mm. and whatever happens. happens. Yeah, I know. It's just so funny to go from like these past couple of weeks. Like, let's see how many days I think. Yeah. So 40, 48 days sober. I've I felt very clear. I mean, in a way that's like I feel like I'm kind of breaking out of a cocoon because mm. I feel all of these emotions and everything. And then today I just feel terrible. It's like when you don't eat when you don't oh. eat um when you don't eat fast food for a long time. So and you, have an emotion, you have an emotional hangover right now. Yes. Oh, yeah. God. Yes, totally. I need to buy more crystals. Yeah, you need to <laughs> put, put 
crystal in, in between your balls. Yeah, but <laughs> everywhere. I'm just have it all a helps. Malachite under my tongue. I think it's all good. I think all of it helps. Don't rely yeah. on just one thing and like different things work for different people. But like, even if crystals are totally bullshit and it's just like a what would they call it placebo effect and it makes you feel better, well, isn't that worth it then? Totally. So. Totally. If it does make you feel better, then. You know what's uh, it's it's kind of like the fucking um, categorical imperative where it's like uh, it, it's like if you're doing good, but you feel like, oh, I'm only doing good because I it makes me feel good. Does is that good? And then Immanuel Kant said it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're doing good. Right. Then it doesn't matter as long the as you're point, doing good. Exactly. The point is to get yourself to a place where you're feeling good. And then that's when manifestation happens. That's when you, that's when you're in flow. Right. And that's when you're like in touch with the universe and things come easier to you. Connections are made easier. A lot of people think, Oh, well, when I get the stuff, the stuff done, when I accomplish my goals, then I'll feel good. And it seems counterintuitive. It's like, no, you have to do what you, whatever you have to do to feel good now, whether it's meditating or whatever tools. And it's like, once you feel good, then nothing can happen but it's still you're like oh i had a great fucking day i just felt good yeah yeah 100 percent. and that's kind of what i'm looking forward to today i mean after this i'm gonna go out get some sun make all those conflict heavy <laughs> phone calls that i have to make and then i don't know i guess is there good uh there's a good crystal store in manhattan that i always go to when i'm near when i do something at gas digital it's there's a on crystal a store in Manhattan. Like, yes, like, yes, there's or, many. Or there's one on 14th Street, closer to Union Square. I think it's on um like 14th and uh I forget. Uh, I forget. I think it's between like A and third. I don't know. I can't it's believe like, I even act shocked that there was and a there's another I'm like, one. There are Jews in Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's another crystal store. It's crystals and plants. Um, and it like you walk past it, you're like, oh, that looks like a plant store. But you go inside. Holy shit, Brandon. If you have time, even if you don't buy anything, you go in there. It feels like you're in another world. You're surrounded Whoa. by all these gorgeous crystals. You feel like transported. And you're just yeah. like, oh, the energy in there is so good. And it's just like, oh, the address wow. for that Because I uh, I have to I want to put something on. I don't know if you can see this. I want to put something on my Oh my my room's a mess, but my my little nightstand there when yes. I clean it up. Do you yeah, think you a know. plant would look good on that? Yes, always. The answer is always more plants. I have like, <laughs> I think I have twenty plants in my apartment, and um, yeah, maybe I'll buy a plant. Yes, you need to do the lowest um effort ones that like because I've gone through so many that have died on me. It's like succulents are great. They're very like you water them once every two weeks, maybe fertilizer, but maybe not until you've had okay. it for a while. Um. Snake plants, really, really good. Very low effort. Okay. Um, okay. There are these I'm, ones that I'm are like little trees with little like spidery leaves. I forget what that's called, but the ZZ, ZZ plants are really good too. They're very, the leaves are very pretty, but it's like low Wait, effort. So these succulent plants, these are like cactuses, right? Cactuses, yeah. They look like they have like juicy little leaves, but they um, like they just a, hold the water in. Like they're not like regular plants that you gotta water like every wow. week. And what was that other one you said after succulents? Z plant? ZZ plants, succulents, and snake plants. Oh, snake plants. Yeah, snake plants. Yeah, get a whatever. snake plant. Get a manly little snake plant for your for your. Get maybe one on each side if you want, Ooh. or just one for your. Yeah. Like Sometimes you can buy them like tall, you know. The Xanabar plant. There's also like um I forget what kind of lily it's called, but like there's certain ones that are like good for your bedroom. I forget what lily it is. I have it in mind. Lil aloe plants are really good too. They're well, like basically the they're, that's what those first plants I looked up look like. The uh they're basically yeah. succulents, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm gonna try that out. I need to put something on my nightstand. You need more plants. That's it's gonna help your whole vibe, your whole yes. room. Yes. Yeah. And I'm gonna put this crystal right into the it's soil. It's gonna be throwing some oxygen your way. It's gonna I be good. I love that. I need oxygen. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you for doing this kind of gay podcast with me. No, this was great. I like it. I like <laughs> it. I've been, you know, I've been going on all these podcasts, and I'm just doing nothing but being such an open douche on all of them. So. It's, it's good. Uh, Everyone it's good. listening. There's probably some open douches listening right now. And everybody is uh going we're going through this 
you know, journey together. And there's probably that, that are list people that are listening. That's like, yes, I'm going through exactly what he's going through right love now. It. It's I love that. Yeah. When I did, um, I did Ari's podcast and we talked about like, uh, you know, just relationship shit. And I was like, God, I'm going to sound like such a fucking like queef. <laughs> but then, you know, people were reaching out and being like, I couldn't relate more to what you were going through. And I'm like, I, you know, it feels really good. So if you're listening to this after you listen to my album, mm -hmm. right, uh, reach out to me and, and, and tell me you relate. That'd be yes. Nice. Uh, Brendan, where can people find you, follow you, support you other than your uh, album? Just at Brendan Sagalow and uh, listen to my podcast. Here's the scenario. Um, yeah, I do that with Mike Feeney and Mike Cannon, and we just put out, we just launched yesterday. So check cool. it out. It's a good podcast. I think it's very funny. I love it. Get a plant, get your balls in the sun. It's going to be great. It's Everything happen. is temporary. Open the fucking windows. Do you know what I mean? You don't even, sometimes incense is good. I mean, that's like, you know, maybe, not, but even uh, there's nothing like fresh air and a fucking plant or two. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. I'm going to do that. I'm going to open Everything's it temporary. Everything's moving through you, you know? Yes. So true. So true. Everything is just ang all even anxiety is just going through my head. Yeah. And then and then leaving. That's yeah. that's Keep the windows open. Let it leave. Don't don't sit it in the front seat and buckle it in. Just yeah. open the windows. Let it leave. Yeah, go. Get the fuck out of here. Get like the I fuck out. Just, just passing through. Or a fart. Yeah. All right, well, Chrissy, thank you for having me on the, on your podcast. Anytime, dude. This is great. I'm so proud of you. Uh, hopefully, yeah, I'll see you soon. Up. Yeah, yeah. I'll see you in the real world one day. <laughs> yeah, and everybody go get my album. Not yes. now more than ever. Not now more than ever, ever on TLB Records. You can also listen to it if you have an Amazon account. You can listen to it on Amazon Music. Spotify, iTunes. Spotify, iTunes, everywhere. Anything you want. Anything everywhere. You want. All right. Sounds later. good. Thank you.